If you're trying to pass your AWS certified cloud practitioner exam, I got three strategies that help me improve my chances of passing the exam on the first try. Stay tuned to find out more. What's up everyone, it's your boy again, the Tad IT here with another video. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the three strategies I use to pass my AWS certified cloud practitioner exam. So let's just, just jump into it, right? So I, the reason why, I'm gonna explain the reason why I went ahead and went and got the exam or when I you know, took the exam. So I'm trying to get more into cloud computing. Um, I'm seeing that, the, not the new wave, but I've seen that the industry, the IT industry is heading more in that direction, more of the services provided that was on-prem or on-premises are now going into the cloud. A lot of IT related jobs are starting to go towards um, like cloud implementation, cloud infrastructure. So now you have to start knowing a little bit about uh, coding, software development a little bit now, which with my background, um, I was a computer science major at the University of South Carolina. So that kind of helped a little bit along with my um, finishing my degree at ECPI University in cybersecurity. Um, some of the classes I've taken were related to cloud and um, also programming. So C++ and Python programming to be name a few. Also just my all around like um, hobbies towards just learning more about software development, learning more about Python, learning more about cloud. I did take my first cloud exam was the Azure AW, yeah, the Azure uh, Microsoft Fundamentals, I say AW, but yeah, it was the Azure Fundamentals exam. Uh, I did a video way back when, a few years ago. Um, I recorded my experience with that, the AZ900. Um, I passed on the first, the second try. The first time I didn't pass due to um, taking the wrong exam. I took the wrong exam and wondered why I didn't pass, but the first, technically my first try taking the exam, but my second time taking a exam related to Azure. Um, I passed the first time, but I kind of moved to AWS. I feel like the industry is uh, more industries are going towards the AWS cloud. Um, AWS being the bigger um, cloud provider and the longest running cloud provider. So that's why um, that's the reasons why I went towards AWS and why I went to cloud in the first place. So the three strategies I use, so I used to increase my chances of passing. So the first one um, was I watched the free and pay sub training on AWS site. So what I did was I went on the AWS uh, or Amazon's website and I made a free account. Um, usually you could use your Amazon account that you use to order, you know, stuff off Amazon. Uh, and I basically used a free version. So there was courses that they were giving out for free on learning the AWS cloud practitioner or how to pass the cloud practitioner exam. And then there were also paid ones. So I'll be honest with you, the free one was help enough. The paid one was more like solidifying what I've learned so far. So what happened, I went through the free course first and then to get more knowledge, get more detail into the exam, into what I need to know for the exam itself, like the different services they provide. I went on ahead and went for the paid subscription. We also came with labs as well. Really did, it really helped me out. I also, on top of that, I also went on YouTube and I found, um, you can just look up AWS Cloud Practitioner Practice Exam questions, and I use that as well. Although they had practice exam questions on there as well, YouTube was a better match because you could find like a hundred. Like some of them give like almost a hundred questions that they would ask on the exam that was so called they would ask on the exam. So that's one strategy I use. Another strategy I use was I played with the AWS's version of the Sims to learn how to use their cloud services. So they have a thing. Um, I forgot the name of it. I put it up on my screen um, in this video, and I put a link in the description as well. So basically what it was, it was like, if you ever played Sims, right, back in the day where you had, like, you know, you build this person, you play as this person in this Sims world, right? So they have something similar to that, your cloud practitioner, and they give you certain tasks that you can do um, for certain businesses, you know, maybe a hotel, you have to set up their website on AWS, or you might have to set up an EC2 instance for a file server for a certain business. Or 
I think one of them was like setting up like dynamic DB. So learning about databases, right? Setting up a database so they could store some of their customer information. So it was different tiers and they were different. Um, they were labs, basically. So like they'll walk you through step by step how to set everything up. Um, and you just learn as you go. You learn as you go when you're putting the information, you're learning about EC2 instances, how to set one up, how to set a server up in the cloud, how to work with Elasticsearch, uh, uh, not Elasticsearch, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, man, but there's so many services Amazon provides, like Dyn DynamoDB, um, EC2 instances, uh, another one that was um, Amazon Lambda, so dealing with, like, if you're running short pieces of code, like Amazon Lambda will be the one, um, Amazon Kinesis Firehose, so many services. Amazon Lex, which was a little bit, they, they touched on it a little bit, but not as much. That Amazon Lex is dealing with AI, putting um, artificial intelligence in your, in your software. Um, there were so many different, like, not challenges, but so many different, uh, it was, I say challenges, within that game that you learned a lot how to set everything up so like with that being said i would prefer using i'm um, going on aws the website or amazon's website and you will look up their um it's like i said it's a game it's called cloud something um they have like i said it's a sims version of their way of basically teaching you how to become a, a cloud practitioner within networking being in sysops being in um which is a system administration within cloud DevOps, uh, it's just so many different things. Database administrator, running databases within the cloud and everything. So that was another way. That's my second strategy on how I learned. I just played the game, and I learned more about how, how to become a cloud practitioner. Um, my third, and I think my most important one, I created labs to play around with and made projects. So what I've done, I, simple as just going on YouTube and just put in AWS projects. Um, one project I did was I host a static website in the cloud. I basically spun up an EC2 instance. Well, no, I didn't even spin up an EC2 instance. The only thing I did was um, I did a, a file server. A file, I set up a file system that's in the cloud. I stored an index file, you know, index HTML file up in, in the file system. I made it public right to the, to the internet. Um, I was able to assign an IP address, assign a DNS or a domain name to it, and I was able to connect that domain name to that file file system, and then boom, I was able to type in the domain name, and I was able to pull up the website. Another one was being able to set up a website where I think it was a lab where it was this fake, um, it was a like this fake website that you can get like pony rides from, and you had to set it up to where people would sign up. And when they sign up, they'll put their information to a database system. And then within the database system, you will know who clocked in for a certain time to ride a, a pony, you know, at what time they will ride a pony day and time. That was learning what AWS Lambda, DynamoDB, uh, SQS. So uh, SQ, the queuing service that they have and SNS service, they, uh, simple no notification services that they have as well. Learning th those types of um service along with EC2 instances as well, um, learning to use API calls and um, the RESTful, like RESTful APIs or REST APIs, representational state transfer. So um, that's what I've done. I went on, like I said, I, and sometimes I just went on there instead of, you know, along with looking on YouTube to see what type of projects I've used or see what type of projects they have out there. I just simply went on there myself and just spun up an EC2 instance. Um, I installed Apache Web Server on there, and I use. I, I was on the EC2 instance. Either I would make a generic web page on the actual server itself, so I use Vim or Nano, and I spin up an HTML, an index HTML file, and have it hosted on the EC2 instance. Or I, um, at times, I would have. I would download um, from my repository from my GitHub account, and I have a website already created, and I just download the files into the actual web server and host it that way as well. Like, do simple, you know, make sure all the ports that's open on there are ports open that, you know, that are allowing internet traffic, you know, making sure that those ports that are not being used are closed, um, 
either I'm going to run the actual web server in the private cloud, the, you know, vir private cloud or public cloud, because, you know, in a VPC or a virtual private network, you have two types of clouds. You have a pri pri private cloud and a public cloud, or we'll say a public subnet and a private subnet. Um, and then you just learn how to use maybe, for example, you have a web server in the private subnet, and then you have that private uh in the private subnet with that web server, you have a web server connected to an internet gateway, which will also have, um, that can use um, network address translation, right? And you have that connected to the public subnet, and then through the public subnet, people can um, have an internet gateway, and then people from the outside going into your virtual pop, your VPC or your virtual private network, they'll go through the internet gateway, and then they'll go through the NAT, right, the network address translation protocol, get their network address changed, you know, associated, you know, making sure that the IP address of the actual web server in the private subnet is not discoverable in the public sub, public um, internet, you know. So that's what I've done. Um, I even spin up an Azure directory, a Windows server in the cloud, and work with at, uh, Microsoft Active, Active Directory, set up a Bastion host, had the Bastion host connected to the the directory server or the domain server in the in the private in the private subnet, right? So that Bastion server is used as a means to do my configurations to whatever I need to do so I can remote from the bashing server into the actual into the actual um at the directory or the domain server the, the DC right the, the domain controller and do what I need to do and then was able to log in or log on a windows or computer based on that so but they also have services dedicated to, you know Azure at the directory you know you can run at the directory services through AWS but I feel like that's redundant because you can like, again you can use Microsoft Azure simple enough right but yo, those are the three strategies I've used um, to actually get myself prepared and pass the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam on the first try. So I do have some bonuses. So some bonuses I do have, I found practice tests on Udemy and I also found a good, um, Udemy is your best friend. If you ever, I'm, I'm no way sponsored by Udemy, but I do approve of their uh, their website due, um, due to multiple times of using their website and passing exams. Um, Again, passing my Linux exam, which I'll make another video about that. I, I passed that on the first try. Um, but Udemy is a good website, especially preparing for the AWS uh, Certified Cloud Practitioner exam. They do have a lot of courses on there based on that and a lot of practice tests. So the only thing you have to do is just look up AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. And um, there's a French person that does a real good job. Stefan, Stefan, um, that's his name, Stefan. I used his whole AWS um, Certified Cloud Practitioner exam course, and that's how, I, be honest with you, that's how I passed. Because not only that he has slides for you to look over, he also had walkthrough videos, so he'll show you how to make your account and how to work with every service that's being, um, that's on the exam. He'll do a walkthrough with you so you can walk through with him along with your account and just discover how each services work, services um, work and everything, how they work together. So that's one thing. So Udemy.com will be your best friend. And another thing was, again, um, labs. But along with that, I did dedicate two hours of studying a day. And I think I say it took me maybe three to four, I say at least a, three to four weeks for me to prepare for the exam just because it was my first time dealing with AWS. So it took me three to four weeks. Again, I studied two hours a day. Um, they were consecutive some of some time, but like on weekends, I take time off and just get away from it and everything. So uh, yeah, at least two hours a day to study it. Um, one hour for videos, another hour for just labbing it up, you know, having a lab and just messing around with the services that I learned that day. So that was a really big help as well. But yeah, um, yeah, that's about it. That's what I've used to how that's all I've used to pass and get certified as a cloud practitioner through AWS on the first try. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this video was very informative for you and I hope it gave you a lot of value. Again, pretty simple, straightforward, you know, from what I was saying. Like I said, I just study lab. Um, the material, resource material that I use, like I said, Udemy, Wes's website, free and paid tier, and their Sims version of um, of becoming a cloud practitioner. They have a Sims game that's dedicated to becoming a cloud practitioner and practicing the craft and practicing um, becoming good at networking, becoming good at DevOps, becoming good as a cloud practitioner in general, becoming good as a sysops, 
a system administrator operations um, professional. So, yeah, again, um, thank you for listening. Hit the subscribe button down below if you want to see more materials, see more content. And, again, uh, this is the, the, the Tad IT. Sign off. Peace.